I'm really thrilled to have this group of panelists here, and I want to welcome to the stage former Mayor Anise Parker. He's going to be our first speaker, and I'm really thrilled that we have uh, not one, but we have two. We have a former Mayor of Houston, Anise Parker, who from the very beginning um, grasped and embraced so many of the concepts that I've touched on today, and has been a stalwart supporter of so much of the work and all of the work you've seen here today. So thank you, Anise. With that, I'd like to welcome Anise Parker, former Mayor Anise Parker, to the stage. I'm really happy to, to be here. And I was interested when the question was asked about uh, who was a Houstonian and, uh, by birth and, and who, was a, who was a Houstonian by choice. And, and, and I'm a Houstonian by birth. This is my city. I love this city. And I've always felt I understood this city. And I understood it enough to see the good and the bad of this city. But I also am aware that this city has changed tremendously in my lifetime. And there's no secrets in politics. I'm going to be 60 in uh, another month. And in that time, this city has transformed itself. So as much as I, as a Houstonian, say, yeah, this is my city and I get Houston, Houston, that's the nature of Houston, any big urban area, but particularly Houston, is that it changes all the time. But it, it is a city of big ideas and the willingness to tackle big things in big ways. Unfortunately, a lot of the, the big ideas that have come out of Houston have been about conquering nature. Not living with nature, but dominating nature. The, the Port of Houston, which has been one of the most significant public works projects in America ever, has been certainly the most important public works project in the history of Houston. And, and yes, uh, the 100-year uh, celebration was in 2014. We wanted to be a port. Galveston had been destroyed. We didn't want to be eclipsed by New Orleans or some other port on the Gulf Coast until we built a ship channel. We're 50 miles inland and we are the largest foreign port in the United States because we wanted to be and we're willing to make the investment. We created the, the trend of dome stadiums across the United States because it's too freaking hot to play baseball in August <laughs> here in Houston and, and we have the mosquitoes then that's not the best thing we ever gave to the world. Neither is AstroTurf, because we couldn't grow grass in the Astrodome, but <laughs> the grandest expression of, of this desire to conquer nature is, is when we conquered gravity. And we put a human being on the moon, and the first word spoken from the surface of the moon was the word Houston. But there have been other times when we have tried to conquer nature that we've been left with tremendous problems. Uh, I never, hadn't heard the dimples and pimples phrase before, uh, the, but we, we built our city on the pothole coastal prairie and the idea that we would take this landscape and fill it in and that, that somehow we would tame the, the small slow moving rivers that, that we call bios that, that define us and make it not flood is hubris on the grandest scale. Houston will always flood. It is where we are in terms of our geography, but we somehow believed that we could do that and we've been left with, with the aftermath of that. But I, I grew up out in Spring Branch, and for those of you who aren't in, in, from Houston, it's, it's like the far west of, of Houston, and when I was growing up, it was cows and horse pastures and forests. And I spent most of my time out in the forest, out in the pastures, often by myself, in nature. And when you can instill a love of nature in a small child, that never goes away. When I came to government, I came with a couple of passions. Uh, I'm passionate about infrastructure because I believe that that's the foundation of cities, but I was passionate about parks and green space, I was passionate about preservation, and I was passionate about public art. And I was determined to figure out ways to integrate those things into what I needed to do as mayor and what I wanted to do as mayor. So 
as we talk about what we can do here in Houston going forward and what other cities can do, elections matter, who we put into office matters, but we have to have politicians who are willing to think in new ways, willing to leverage relationships and to create partnerships, willing to pay for the projects when the city needs to be the one ponying up, and whether that is with dollars or such as the case of the Botanic Garden with uh, a big tract of not pristine land but a really big golf course close into the city of Houston, but to pay in some way, to make an investment from the public side to make projects happen, you have to be willing to do that. You need people who are willing to spend political capital, and I believe that political capital is the kind that should be spent and spent completely. The bank should be empty when you leave office. <laughs> and then finally, you need public officials who are willing to give up control. Joe Turner, are you looking? At <laughs> <laughs> willing to give up control when someone else can do it better, whether that is another government entity, whether that is uh, a, a, a private sector partner in order to achieve a greater goal. And I would also say that so many of these projects, while we're focused on the projects, they are embedded in a network of city ordinances and policies and contracts and commitments that have to be navigated so that it matters very much to have someone who is a partner in that and understands the different building blocks that need to be constructed in different ways to allow these big projects that we're also passionate about to, to take place. And I'll close by just saying that when I'm, I've been asked many times over the years what's my favorite public space in, in Houston and I have unashamedly said that it is, it is uh, Buffalo Bio and I, I am a huge fan of Buffalo Bio Park and the work that we've done. And the, what I like best about it is that you can still, if you're on the water, if you're in a boat, a canoe, a kayak, you can disappear from the city and the disappear, city disappears from view. And you can be in a natural experience in the heart of the city. But going forward, the most exciting project that I see is our BioGreenway 2020 initiative. Because these small rivers that define Houston and have shaped Houston for good or ill over the years touch every community in Houston. And it can't just be about the parks, I mean the trails that we build. It's hiking, bike, hiking bike trails are wonderful things. It can't just be about the trails we build along those bios. It has to be about taking them and creating an interconnected green web that will help shape the city of the future and allow every neighborhood of Houston, every child in Houston, to have some taste of the outdoors and of nature. Beyond the trails, into true linear parks of many different shapes and sizes to connect what is a sprawling, messy, uh, disconnected urban environment into a whole. And I think these bios and the parks and the trails that we're going to create along them are the one thing that can link us together into the future. So thank you.